Uh, homage to him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened one. We give homage to him and to his teaching and all that he has taught us as women, as men, as children. We give homage to him because he has taught us to stay in the present time, to keep our mind straight and clear and sit down until this is all done. <laughs> sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. sadhu, sadhu. That's would be the worst threat in the whole world. You know, when women sit down, you don't get dinner. <laughs> okay. Now, what I want to talk to you about today is important. It's like off the record, sort of. I have to get some hot water first. I'll be right back. I want to talk to you about is uh, important because it's about translation it's about an approachable translation of listening to how the buddha teaches and when the buddha is teaching you about dhamma he wants you to understand that he wants you to learn about how suffering works and suffering can be, you know, if you have a sore spot on your head, it can be suffering. Or suffering can be a mental problem, like a, be feeling bad mentally or sad, that can be suffering. But also physical pain is suffering of any kind, you see? So the Buddha was teaching us uh, how to manage pain. And uh, he was teaching us a way of the how, how what the pain is and he was telling us how it actually works and then he even told us how we could make the pain less so it didn't hurt us so much and if we're taking medicine that was covering up the pain sometimes that makes your your head makes your you, you groggy it makes you so you can't think very clearly you know and so he was showing you a way, if you don't pay attention to the pain, put your attention on the pain, and you and instead you forgive the pain. So why would I forgive my pain? Wait a second, I don't know, just a minute. I have to, right now, when I'm teaching you, I have to make sure that my my throat is clear so I can even talk right now. So that's why I go back and forth like a silly goose. <laughs> okay. No problem. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so some of the people who are translating what the Buddha is saying are translating it in very, very simple ways, you know? And... Um, they try to put it in, in terms that uh, would be easy for you to remember. Now, one of the things I like, I, I found one here in this little book is very, very clear. Sometimes the way he's teaching is just very, very, very clear. And let's see, the first part of this one, mm, that's not it. It's basically teaching you. Here's one. No life is, is uh, permanent. Like that means, you know, you're born and you live and you just don't get to die. It's permanent. We wish it would last longer sometimes, but it doesn't last longer. Everything comes and then it exists and then it passes away. 
but nothing lasts forever. And knowing about this helps us to understand that we can just let things go and stay in the present time. So what is present time? Present time is meaning whatever I'm doing and practicing. So what I'm going to be talking about today in different ways is how are we going to use the, the meditation to help us with things that we're, we're doing in our life? How are we going to use it? That's the most important thing is how we're going to use it. If we are not talking about how to use the, the lesson of right effort, if we're not uh, using it to help us in a daily things that are happening to us, what good is it? Why should we be practicing? Now, Bonte needs to help me a little bit. I, I <laughs> trying to figure out how to share screen with this uh, program. Just a green button here. Uh -huh. And then, and then I go to a whiteboard, I guess. And then, how do we get the way? <laughs> Let's see. There will um, be an option now. When you share screen, there is an option. Oh, whiteboard. Screen. Huh. Whiteboard. I see whiteboard, hmm. but I can't make it get big. You just click on it and it will uh, become a uh, full screen. I thought so, but I, wait a minute. Nope, I can't make it work. <laughs> I can't make it work. How do I make it big, Bunty? Uh, you just click uh, on that, uh, select it, and when you uh, click on it and sh share, I think uh, it will, uh, like, I'll try this, see? Oh, here, here. Okay, now I'm, oh, my goodness. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> what happened? I just opened Wait. it and I'll just show you. Uh, click on the uh, uh, share screen, then uh, click on the uh, whiteboard, and then on the uh, right-hand uh, bottom corner, there is a uh, share again. When you share, it will become a uh, full screen. Okay, got it. Okay. Now what? What then happened now? now? <laughs> uh, one more time. One more time. <laughs> there. But this screen thing is still here. I don't know what that is. Okay. Um, um, it says I'm sharing, but I can't get rid of these pictures. can't do it. How do I do it, Bonte? See uh, now. So. Maybe uh, you're not uh, selecting the uh, 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 correct option for the pre uh, screen. Are you, uh, because it should be white, actually, if you share. I, I'll do it. So, uh, see, uh, I am sharing. This. Right here. Okay. I'm going to explain to you and maybe you're going to have to draw it. So how do I make that go away? How do, You did that. See, I, I, I touch it. So, uh, uh, okay. How do we get to the uh, screen? Click on share screen. Yep. Now click what? on the whiteboard, and then on the bottom, uh, share. Uh, on the right hand uh, side, bottom, share. I don't know why this stuff is here now. Uh -huh. I can. I'll just stop the recording now. So where I'm showing you. So you draw a dot. So the first thing I teach you when I'm teaching you how to practice TWIM, I'm teaching you the six R's, okay? I'm gonna teach you how to send loving kindness to yourself, okay? So the first thing I'm doing, I'm, I'm teaching you targeting. A target is when I aim at something and I my objective is to hit that so the first thing is he's he's drawing a target you see okay so he's trying to show you over here that you're sending it to yourself so you say may i be happy may my mind be peaceful may my mind be calm and you're smiling and you're sending loving kindness to yourself when you're sending loving kindness to yourself 
it feels good. You're sending metta. And it's, it's like um, if it was a hot day in India, it's like a cool water coming down over you like, uh, a, like a waterfall. It, it feels so nice because this is loving kindness. And when you are feeling the loving kindness come down on you, that is also, you cannot have any thoughts about hating somebody or hate being angry about hating something that's wrong, hating the pain or hating that somebody did something. You cannot think about hate when your mind is producing metta, loving kindness. This is what the Buddha discovered. Now, the second thing that happens is now we did this. This is where he, he, he has you sending it to yourself. But now what I want to show you is now suddenly this feeling that is in your heart and you're sending the loving kindness to yourself and you're not feeling any thoughts about hatred anymore. And so then what you do is you we ask you to feel it moving up into your head. The feeling moves from your body in your heart. It feels warm when you're sending, but now you send it up to the head. So if we had this picture, Bonte, if we had the picture down here, we would say, okay, first I'm sending it to myself, and then I'm going to send it up into my head. Once I send it up in first to moves, the self, then to spiritual friend, and then uh, it goes to the head. So that That's is how right. We send, we're sending it to a spiritual friend. We're sending it first to ourselves and then we're sending it to mommy. So if, if um, Narada, if you're, if he's there, Narada sending it to your mommy, you're sending loving kindness to yourself and then you're sending it to your mommy. And then when you're sending it to your mommy, that's the spiritual friend, the first spiritual friend. Whenever you're teaching children, you are always teaching the children to send the loving kindness to themselves first and then to their parents. You teach them the, the you teach them how to work with the uh, the um, metta and the karuna, you know, the loving kindness and the compassion and the joy. You teach them in the family first and then outside i want everybody to remember this okay so you're sending it to a spiritual friend so the first target was yourself and this when you're sending it to yourself that's a kindness isn't it it's a kindness because you might have pain or feel bad so sending it to yourself you're you need some loving kindness don't you so there's nothing wrong with you sending loving kindness to yourself and, and, and helping yourself feel better. And then you're sending it to a friend and you're wishing them to be happy and you're wishing them to feel good. See, and when you start sending it to the friend, something else happens, something very special. When you start sending it to the friend, what happens is then there's no thoughts of cruelty happening because compassion is when you are compassion for yourself, but also compassion is a soothing thing. It is a quiet thing and it takes away thoughts of cruelty. Like what is cruelty? Cruelty would be like, um, I'm going to get some ice cream, but I'm not going to let anybody else have any ice cream. <laughs> it would be, being selfish and taking stuff away and keeping it to myself is not the answer. Being kind to myself is not is the targeting, but then you're sending it to the friend. So first target was myself, second target was the friend. Now it's going to move up into the head when it goes up to the other in your head. Then we find out something else that the Buddha was saying. And this is generosity too. This is dana. Dana is generosity. Can you remember that? If we have the word dana, we would put the word dana on the screen. Dana is the generosity. And dana to myself, dana to the spiritual friend, and now dana to other people. What other people? Hmm. 
lots of different other people in the world. And the other people that are in the world, they need to understand the benefit of generosity too. So the generosity is important to, to, to put out the generosity. Um, more you give to people, the more you give to yourself in loving kindness, the more happier you will be internally. When you're giving loving kindness to the spiritual friend, you will probably start getting loving kindness back from the spiritual friend to you. So the more you give, the more you get back. What goes around comes around. What you put out get, gets back. And so this is a system the Buddha called karma. He called this karma. And, th and this karma is an action that is a circular action. This karma is, karma just means action, but the kamapala, the fruit of the action, is when you are good to other people, they start to be good to you. And that's what we want to have happen, right? So first to myself, and then to the spiritual friend, and then to the other kinds of people. So here we go again. Who are those other kind of people? Now Vanti can go underneath where it says other people. We will put 11 little marks, 11 different marks. There will be three more spiritual friends. And spiritual friends are just people that you really like the person. And they're not a family person. They have to be a person that's alive. They can't be somebody that's dead when you're first working on them. They can't be somebody that's dead. Because you don't want to think about a bunch of stories. You just want to learn how the feeling of loving kindness grows inside you. And the feeling of loving kindness as it grows inside you, and then you share it with a friend and share it with these other people. So once again, who are the other people? Three more spiritual friends, and then four family members. Four family members can be anybody, male or female, uh, just people that you um, are not angry at those people. You just uh, people that are family members that you respect and you love. And then you have four other kinds of people that are neutral people. Neutral people are like my school teacher, my librarian, um, the person who is my neighbor, these kinds of people. See, that's how we do that part. Um, neutral people can be the mailman who comes or the trash man who helps you take the trash out. He helps you carry things out. If you can't carry the groceries in, maybe he comes and helps you. These are just neutral people. They're, they're not close uh, acquaintances. But whatever you put out to these people, remember, they're going to put it back to you. This is the assumption. Assumption means I am going to assume. That means I'm going to decide that if I'm nice to you, you'll probably be nice to me. See? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying this is always going to work, but I'm saying it would be awfully fun if we just decided how do we want our world to be? Do we want it to be full of mean people? Do we want it to be uh, this side fighting with that side? Do we want to have a world where everybody is always fighting and doing things with war? Or do we want to decide to create the world that we are thinking about right now. What would happen if I told you, and this is the truth, what would happen if you know the world the way you want it to be right now, and for the rest of this week, you decided to make the world that way all week long? What would happen? What do you think would happen? I bet you that if you are starting to simply never mind people who would get upset, never mind them when they get angry, they're frustrated too. They have hard things happening in their life too. 
Lots of people don't have enough food. Lots of people have lost their, their house. I live in a place where all around me and the people from the Ukraine are here and they had to leave their villages and they had to watch things. They, they don't have their houses, they don't have their clothes, they don't have a lot of things. Many of them, I talk to them and they have been learning lessons, important lessons because of the war and what's happening around them, they have learned the most valuable thing in the whole world. And that is that they're still alive and they still have what they do have and they are still strong enough to survive. And Poland is a good country. Poland opened its doors and Poland let over a million people come because they had to run away from the war and they lost their homes and lost everything in their businesses. But you see, we forget our own power. As human beings, our biggest problem as a human being is we forget we are not powerless. If I'm sick, and I'm very sick, so if I'm sick, why can't I be smiling and be sick? I'll tell you why. Because the, what is wrong with me is here. There's no way I can make it go away and change right now. It's the truth. And whenever the truth is right in front of us, there's a saying, you have to allow the truth to be there. You have to make it okay for it to be there. When you're hurt, when you're sick, when you have a disease like I do, then you come back to the feeling of, of being happy and making a wish for your own happiness. And while you're doing the meditation, you have to remember something about the truth. The truth is when a sensation comes into your body or when you're feeling bad in your head or when mom is really upset about something and you don't know what to do next, you have to remember that that's there and it's happening right now. And that's the truth. And it's okay for the sensation to be there. It's okay for it to be there because it has to be okay because it's there. Anytime you try to fight with the truth of what is happening, anytime you try to control the truth and anytime you try to make the truth be anything other than what it is, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer because you want to make it into something else that it isn't right now. So what should I do, Sister Kama? What should I do? If you can't make it change, maybe it's okay for you to accept this is what is happening in your life right now. And while it's happening, you simply accept it, forgive it, let go of it, the tension it causes in your head, relax your head and smile and come back. So what you do is you, I want you to play a game. I want you to play a never mind game. Just never mind the pain, let it go, relax, smile, come back. You put up a big sign, you can write a sign, paint a sign and put it on the wall. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna relax. You can paint a little picture of a smiley that's relaxing. I'm gonna let it go, I'm gonna relax, I'm gonna smile and I'm gonna come back. Because why? Because that's all you can do. You can go in the corner if you want to and you can sit and cry and, and you can get a stomach ache and then not be able to sleep. Yeah, if you want to, <laughs> but you don't have to. You can leave it alone and it will change. Everything changes. Do you remember I said that nothing stays the same? So when we're talking about pain, pain doesn't come in one line. It's not like one bang, you know, one, it isn't like I put one dot on the page and just draw a straight line and that's the pain. It's not like that. Pain comes and it goes up and down and up 
and down and the pain pushes and it hurts sometimes really bad, but then it changes. And so you can watch it. And if you watch it for a while, you'll understand that the pain happens the same way each time it goes along and it goes. Uh, uh, <laughs> and it does this. You know, some pain, it goes like this. Some pain goes along like this. And it goes, it goes, the pain. Uh, 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 and then it comes back again. It goes, uh, 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 that's the pain. So you can draw pictures of pain. You can draw pictures of pain. And sometimes they're pink. Sometimes they're red. Sometimes they're hot. Sometimes they're cold. You can draw pictures of the pain. But you remember something about the pain. The pain is the present time. The pain is the truth. We cannot change the truth. And so what we do with it is we change it into something positive instead of just letting it overcome us. That's what we're doing. So let's go back to the targeting. First of all, what did I say? First of all, I said we sent it to ourselves. And then I said, we sent it to a spiritual friend. Hope Bonte's still there. Okay. <laughs> and then we sent it to the other kind of people. We, it went up to our head and we sent it to other kind of people because we don't want to hold on to all this loving kindness. You can't hold on to it, put it in a bag and keep it in your pocket. Well, that's no good. I mean, I know somebody who really gets upset if I hold on to it. Just, just a minute. I have a friend. Uh, who, who comes to my uh, meeting sometimes, I come to the meeting, let's see if I... I don't live here alone. I, I actually live here alone, but I do have some company and sometimes this little guy comes. Um, I, we didn't really give him a name yet, but he keeps me company. And uh, would, you like to, would you like to say hello? Well, yes, I'd like to say hello. Hello, hi. Hi, can you see me? I, I'm there. Yep. I don't know if you can. Let's see if I can. I think background you have to do. Ah, yeah, now hi. Can can, hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Oh, oh, this is, whoop. this is Jackie. Hello. Hi. Oh, look, there's a little boy. I see. Oh, look at that. Well, I, I live here and I, I have pain too. I help Sister Kama with her painting. She understands that I can change her pain anytime she can change. I, I, I need to figure out this better. And anyway, I'm going to sit down now. <laughs> he, he comes in and kind of helps me to remember that my pain can change anytime. It doesn't have to stay the same way. So if there's pain in your body and you relax into it and accept the pain, then it gets lighter and it doesn't get so hard, okay? So here we go, here's the targeting. First of all, I sent it to me, then I sent it to a spiritual friend, then I sent it to the other people. Now, where are we gonna send it now? I think we have to send it a little bit further. Where do we have to go? We have to send it to uh, to the people all across the world. Uh, we we have to send it up, up, all across the world. And so, the best thing for us to do, in my humble opinion, you do squeak, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, in my opinion, we should send the loving kindness to all living beings. Do you think that would be okay? We could send it to all living beings in the world. Is, is that okay, is it? Yes, you're doing a good job, okay. You can send the loving kindness to all living beings in the world, including President Putin and the president of Ukraine, including the United Nations, including the presidents of all the countries, including the whole world, and especially including the men in the world that they need to stop fighting. They need to stop arguing. We can send the loving kindness to all of them. 
and send the loving kindness and happy feelings to all the women in the world so that women will simply stop working until there is no more talk about this using of bombs anymore. It's a simple thing. This world is obviously messed up because we have enough money to feed everybody. We have enough money to house everybody. We have enough money for children to have what they need and parents for what they need. The only thing is we're selfish and we're not taking care of it. If people had what they need, there wouldn't be any need for any war anymore, would there? What are you gonna fight about? If you have what you need, you need to help each other. We don't get it. And then we don't deserve to keep living on this planet if we don't figure this out. It's simple. So you learn how to change the world. How can we change the world individually, us? First, you send loving kindness to yourself. Then you send your loving kindness to your mom and your dad, and you send loving kindness to the spiritual friends. Then you send it to the other kind of people. And then, Bhati, what we need to do is we need to come down like um, here in this part over here. I don't know. <laughs> over here, we need to make a big you circle. You can take the, uh, the, this thing, uh, uh, the pen, and uh, start drawing also. You can also try. Uh, start, uh, try. I don't know how to start the pen drawing. The left, left uh, you can uh, select uh, the pen over here. On the left. Over over where it says down? Yes. It doesn't draw. I've been clicking on it and it won't pick it up. Or doesn't up, uh, go for the up, up, go for the up. You see? Okay, I did something. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is a big world with all living beings in it. Living beings. All living beings. Can you imagine all the living beings in the world? What did, what did the Buddha say about that? See, I have it right here. I have, who are the living beings in the world? When the people ask the Buddha, who are the Brahmins? Who are the important people who are asking the questions about suffering, asking the questions how everything works? Who are those people? And the Buddha starts to explain the order as they are of the generic divisions of all living things. You ready? So, he taught about the grass and the trees and how the grass and trees are, are intelligent in certain ways. They respond to each other. They are, the trees can talk, tree, trees can communicate by bending their leaf and lifting water, all kinds of things. And the moths and the butterflies and the bugs and the beetles, the beetles, you know, the beetles, they don't have legs, they just have bellies and they move around on the ground. And um, the water dwelling fish and the birds that fly in the sky, these are all living beings, all living beings. And the birth uh, of the differences of how all the living things are, is not funny all these things. Then he says, when we, when you ask me about the difference in a man, from one man to another, from a Polish man to a Ukrainian man, from a man in Africa to a man on the moon, <laughs> to all different people, what is the difference in human beings? There is no difference. There's no difference. Everybody has hairs on their head. Everybody has ears. Everybody has a mouth. Everybody has lips. And everybody has shoulders. Everybody has a belly. You feed your belly because you're hungry. Everybody 
ha has makes babies the same way when they're human beings. And they there's no difference in the hands or in the feet or in the fingers or in your nails. There's no difference in your knees or in the thighs or in the color of your, of your skin or in the voice when you speak, there is no difference. We have different sounds maybe, but different languages, but there's really no difference how these things work. And then there's nothing distinctive that can be found that is dividing up human beings. It's only in our imagination. It's only because we make up stories. It's only, you know, you don't learn to hate naturally. You know, there's an old song. You've got to be taught to be afraid of people whose eyes are oddly made. You, you've got to be taught before you're six or seven or eight, you've got to be told these things. These things are not natural. These things, differences between people are just a mistake to start talking that way because we all need water. We all need land. We all need housing. We all need clothing. We all need to be kind. We need to be full of love. We need to share. These are the things. Now, mothers traditionally, in mo in all, if they have not been taught otherwise, women are the caretakers of the loving and the loving kindness and compassion and the joy and the sharing and the working together. It is our husbandry to do this in the homes of all human beings in all religions across the globe. And like I'm saying, I was upset in the beginning of this program and I was upset for a reason, not a an angry kind of bad kind of reason, but a good reason because women, if we sit down and we stop, the world stops. That's what I want Al Jazeera to hear. I want them to hear this. I want the world to understand. Women hold the power in this situation, not some organization that's going to decide whether to have a meeting or not. All chemical development and weaponry and all of that needs to be put aside. It needs to be destroyed. Every bomb, every chemical weapon, every Everything that can hurt anybody should be outlawed completely off the face of the earth unilaterally in every country in the world. And women should just stop. That's when the end. So when you're talking about loving kindness and you're talking about what, what we're, we're talking here in doing it, this you're sending to loving living beings. How do I send to living beings when it's my turn to send to living beings? How do I do that? I do it this way. <laughs> I can't even make a big wing anymore. I don't know how to make the big wing, big wing, you know, big, big wing to 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 fly away, to fly away and and Fly away, fly away across time, all the way across time, fly away. Oops, I got a square. All of a sudden I got a square. I don't know how to do that. Oops, we got a square again. I want you to fly away across the world and I want you to, I want you to drop loving kindness everywhere. So when I tell you to start to practice loving kindness, it's another targeting. My first targeting, the targeting was to me, right? The second targeting to the spiritual friend. The third targeting was to different kinds of people, 
The next targeting was sending to all living beings in the world, in, in the whole world. And when you're sending out to them, you're thinking you are, by the time you're sending loving kindness and, and compassion to all living beings, you are that loving kindness. When you practice sending to yourself, you practice sending to mommy and daddy, and you start practicing to your neighbor. Every time you're practicing, you are building it in your mind. And pretty soon, your mind, the first thing that will happen is loving kindness comes up first. And so you smile. You smile and your loving kindness comes first with everything you do. That's what you want to have happen. So that is the spiel. That's what we're doing. We're learning to target, to send out. What is coming out of us? I'm going to uh, make this go away, Bonte. Can we close it now? Okay. So this gives you a picture that in the end, you, you are sending it. You are sending it away. In the end, it's going out from you. Just, just like, I guess you could say it's going out from you and you're the, you're the circle and it's like just rays of light are blinking and the rays of light are shining and they're shining all out into the world. That's what's happening because you are becoming like a candle. You are the candle. And when you light the candle, loving kind, kind thoughts for myself and and that and you hold that in yourself before you go to bed at night you hold that in yourself and then you send it to the family and everything you are the light and you're shining so you don't have to make the light i'm trying to get you to understand this is not something you have to make it and push it and try to control it don't do that you just pretend, I am the light. I am the light. I can shine and I can give powerfulness to my mom and powerfulness to my dad and powerfulness to myself. I can give the loving kindness and compassion to the world. That's the lesson. So let's go back to the beginning and have some input on this. Bonte, can we go away from this page or? <laughs> uh, open a new other thing, whiteboard? No, there, there. So the idea here is this is how we have to, this is how we have to justify, you know, what are we going to do with this light? Where is this light coming from? The next question people ask me is, okay, this, how did I do that? How, I didn't do anything. I just was the light. So how do I know this is working? Because the other day I went to the doctor and we go to a big hallway in the hospital. And this hallway is full of people that have cancer the way I have cancer. And they're very serious stage four people. And most of those people are sitting there looking at the floor. They're frowning. Some of them are crying. They have to talk to the doctor again. They're not happy. I know exactly how they feel. I did this for three months. This is exactly how I was. I was so sad because I heard that I have this. And I heard that I can't take it away. And this is my truth. And this is what I live with now, you see? So how I can change that truth, what can I do? I, I just have to be with it and let it go and keep smiling and laughing at it because that's what's there. And I have to work with that. The man who was standing next to me, his wife was sitting in a chair in front of him and she was crying. And she said to him, why can't, why is she not crying? Me, why am I not crying? Why am I not crying? Why am I not sad like everybody else? How can I be 
smiling, how? And I didn't have time to talk to her except to say, because I made a decision. I did. I made a decision after three months of this telling, this disease telling me I am powerless. This disease is happening to me. I decided what if this disease is happening from me? What if I get to decide if I'm going to be powerless or not? And then I made a decision. If I can't fight it, if I can't change it, I have to look at what's there that is that is good and pure. And I have to take that and think about that and feed that to myself. The loving kindness is for you. The loving kindness is for you to share. And when you share it with your dad and your mom, or you share it with another person who is sick, each time you do that, you're feeding yourself. You're feeding yourself love. And that love grows inside of you. Yep. And what you put into yourself and you put into other people comes around and keeps feeding the world. So before anything else, you are creating a new world every time you practice loving kindness. So that's what the story is. Does anybody have any comments about this? Are we getting closer to talking about what happens when we start taking the practice and doing it all the time, not just in the hallway with the doctor, all the time when we're living our life? Are we getting closer to understanding how we can use it? You tell me. Anybody? Come on. I want to see you. Come on. <laughs> Tell me what. Tell me what you do with your loving kindness. Tell me what you do with your practice. Question time. We have to be interactive. <laughs> Yeah. So Narada, Narada, what is the story? Is this your little boy? You you have to turn your yeah. Yes, yeah. she's Emma. She's my little boy. And uh these two days I asked him to do the guided meditation by David from YouTube and he tried 30 minutes. You want to share about your meditation? How about your meditation? She write it. Oh, that's good. Good job. So he did that. Yeah. That's very good. So you're drawing a good picture. Yeah. The, then the last picture, the last picture is like a big bird. And the big bird is flying and taking it to all living beings. That is really good. I'm happy to see that. I hope I can help more children um, to understand what this is because this is how we change the world. We're not stuck. We know what we want our world to be like. We just have to make the decision to get up in the morning and start being that world. Yeah? Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I see you. There's you. Hi. Uh, hello, sister. Sorry, the light's behind me, so it's a bit hard to, to see. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, you're asking about the loving kindness. And uh, for me, uh, the loving kindness is, is if you like, uh, it's the it's the uh, enabling technology. It's what enables uh, 
uh, us to open up individually and for others to open up to feel what is going on. And, and then the compassion is staying with what we're feeling and, and, uh, and working with that. Exactly. You, you're hitting it right on the head. Exactly right. You know, we're starting to connect. I'm, I'm managing to connect with someone now to try to do more research. And um, that person is working on with children, learning the best way for them to, to uh, learn with young learning is to remove, to, to, um, to get connected and like you're explaining and to activate the uh, loving kindness practice, the loving kindness and the Karuna mostly, you know, and see the hatred and the um, thoughts of hatred and thoughts of ill will just melt away. And then when they're more balanced, uh, the question, you know, she's working on the tension and tightness, documenting how you can remove it by practicing this way. And what I'm trying to do is prove that there are four different chemicals coming from the brain, hormone chemicals, four different ones for Metta Karuna Mudita Upeka that are eliminating four different issues, hatred and cruelty and discontent and aversion. If we can do that, we're scientifically showing that there are actually four, four different chemicals that are involved with this. And I believe there are. And I've had signals from <laughs> different ways of receiving signals to understand that this is true. Now, all I have to do is figure out how to, to prove it by using her research method and so we're starting to team up now just this past week with an orphanage that's in Nepal where it's possible that we can, the children in the orphanage, she's been working with them already, but we can also put this in part of the, of the examination, uh, part of the, of the research project so that we can actually see if this is happening. And we think it is. Because we have oxytocins. I don't know if you've heard about oxytocins are the new, they call it, they, they would say dopamine is released with loving kindness. And then oxytocins might be different from dopamine. And then there's another one. There's a third one. And I think there's a fourth one that they've already mentioned. So we're not trying to prove something that from the very beginning, uh, because the uh, the neuroplasticity has already been proven, we know how the brain learns. We already know that that if you do the same thing to the brain exactly the same way again and again, that that's the fastest way that the neural uh, the neural pathway will change. We know that, and the neuroplasticity was the the verification of the fact that these brains, they don't die. <laughs> I mean, the brain doesn't, uh, the, the synapses don't just like, for instance, get wounded in a, even in a, um, a stroke and then they don't ever come back. We know that's not true anymore. And so because of that, 12, 15 years back, we were verifying neuroplasticity and the rebirth of the synapses and the repetition method for changing the neural pathway. Those three things are established. So now if we go one step further, in my opinion, this the reason I'm wanting to do this is because I don't want you to just play around with meta because meta is just the tip of the iceberg. There are four pieces here that are happening naturally in the development of the person. I have documents for four, 12 or 14 years of, of, of documents for the retreats we've done showing what happens to the student naturally. We are not even telling the student what is going to happen when they're practicing the metta, then the karuna, then the mudita. But as they're developing in their practice, the way that I was showing you the targeting, 
uh, it is naturally occurring. This is what is exciting to me. So that we, if we were to step backwards now and, and move from, from uh, the old school, I call it the old view of the MBSR research is what I consider old or early, early form of investigation, where you would simply say, instead of staying with the pain, I want you to move your attention over here and, and sit with your attention on the pain out here away from what you're doing, but stay with the pain. That was just a trick. That was like the first step. John, you know, what he did, okay, um, in, in MBSR in that discovery, he figured out if your attention is on something other than over here, away from the task you're trying to do, well, then you're not gonna try to get as much medicine to stop the pain. That's how this whole thing started with John Kabat-Zinn, okay? Is, is the, the morphine drops on the old system where you push the button to get the morphine for the terminally ill children, okay? You just push the button and if you, if you uh, had had too much, you wouldn't get any. But if you were pushing the button, you would get a little bit more morphine each time. That was the old system and it was a big deal, but then, asteroids came on the computer, the game asteroids, and they took the children and they had the children sit in bed and play asteroids on the computer at the hospital at Mass General, okay? And then when they were sitting there playing with the game, trying to shoot the little asteroids down in the game, they were not thinking about pressing the button for the pain. And the big deal was they were not using as much morphine. So this was a huge, huge uh, development. Put your attention somewhere else and things change. Okay, that's step one. But we've been stuck now in step one for over 25 years. It's time to go a little bit further. So now there's a breakthrough. The reason what tripped this off, the reason I got started on the research itchy, itchy about the research again was because they're making announcements now in the summaries for uh, loving kindness meditation, they're calling it LKM research. And they're making it like it's a big next step. Now we're gonna look at what happens if we practice metta. But metta was not what the Buddha was teaching. He was teaching the Brahma Viharas. And the reason we have this handed down to us that metta was just metta is a mistake. It's, an, it's a big whoops in the history of Buddhism, we lost the Brahma Viharas. And the Brahma Viharas are, are the four realms, the four, the four heavenly realms that we call them, which is the four pieces that are actually naturally, very naturally rolling over one to the other, to the other, to the other. And this is what we want to show in a piece of research where you personally, as a, as a public person, don't have to wait 10 or 12 years to hear the benefits about this. We just want to do it in a way where we're giving it to you and having you just go try it. Try it. If you do it all the time, your metta will melt into karuna, will melt into mudita. You may not go as far as the last one, but you will touch it because you will not have aversion to a lot of things in the end. You won't go fully, you know what I'm saying? You won't go fully into falling into the depths of deep, deep, that's not gonna happen to you. But your loving kindness, your karuna and uh, the um, mudita experience is a natural flow development of the human species. And it's part of what is wrong with our DNA. We, we can't change our DNA, but if we, sub, if, we, if, we re, if we relax ourselves into the natural flow of this, good things are happening for us to get through our breakdowns with people. You know, if we break up with people, the first thing uh, I was, this is interesting. We were trying, the other day, we were trying to demonstrate the, what is the clearest, I was doing it with a, another researcher, right? What is the clearest example you can think of where 
you can see what I'm talking about with the development of this change happening naturally. And to me, I'm working with a bunch of people that uh, are helping people to get through social breakdowns. Like if they had relationships and a lot of what we do is we help people to get over the breakdown. So breaking up with somebody is a hard thing. And uh, male, female, male, male, female, female, I don't care. The relationship breakups are very hard to get through. So let's look at, a, the, at the anatomy of it really quickly. So the anatomy of a breakdown is you, you can agree with me or disagree. It's fine to talk about it. But the first thing that I see happen when I'm counseling people for breakdowns, the one person hates the other person and the other person hates them. <laughs> so here you've got the hatred. This is the, the, at the meta point, this is where you've got the hatred. So if you start practicing meta, that's what's going to melt, start to melt away is this, is this hatred between each other. It's vicious. It is assumptive. It's not usually factual. It's all torn up and emotional. And it's the initial hatred thing that can consume the people. Okay, what's the second one? Well, the second one was cruelty. With Karuna, when it starts to soften, something else is changing. So what was left when you let go of the hatred in this, this breakup relationship appears to me to be uh, cruelty. So if you were talking about breakups between two, two be, between human beings and you're talking about cruelty, what do people do to each other after they're through initially the heated, hot, I hate her for what she did. She, I, I hate him for what she did. What is the next piece? It's cruelty. And the cruelty is, I hated you for this, but okay, I'm over that. But now I'm going to make sure your life is miserable and it'll never be the same. I'm going to trick you and make you lose your job. I'm going to lie. I'm going to slander and all that stuff. All of that dot drama is coming in the second level there. That's what we see in the charts. And then the third level, the third level is, is where if you keep, keep, doing the um, developing this if you're going into the third level and it's softening out and you're starting to share it share it you're teaching your brain to share it you're teaching your brain to bring it up each time you you are living okay and the third level is uh mudita and it's an it's a it is um empathetic uh joy and it's not an extreme thing but you you start to um, uh, you come around to appreciating feeling for the other person that you begin to realize you're getting to a place of sanity where you can see that person probably is hurting as much as you are. That's probably what's in you know, and you're you're beginning to feel the other person's really feel, and that's where you're talking about. I hear you talking about the interconnection of the people, the natural evolution of the interconnection between uh, the people emotionally and structurally are ha is happening naturally. And that's where I hear you are. And then you take the thing that you do that is so good. And I don't talk about it enough. I keep trying to figure out how to talk about the yoga enough, but actually you'd be proud of me. I took a walk today. And three different times, Patrick picked me up the right way. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel being picked up at all. And I, he stood behind. I was on a bench. I went for 800 feet. We, we measure everything in steps, 800 steps. I went and I was sitting in a, on a bench and he said, I'll pick you up. What are you doing? And he went behind me and he put his arms under me and he lifted me up and I couldn't even feel it. I had no pain at all, none. And see if he comes in front of me and he picks me up, um, I can feel it on the side if he's not really, really careful. But if he does everything in an, in an, in an and this is something I think you should um, be teaching this uh, in emergency medical technician training should be informed for people who are as part of their, there is a section in EMT training 
I know usually exists where they're taught about lifting and moving and everything. And they lift and move me the wrong way. It is so incredibly painful. It's ungodly because I have broken ribs. See? But if you are lifting me that way, just um, put it, and he wasn't, there was no effort. I said, how did you do that? I'm still 170 pounds. I mean, I, I'm 170 pounds and he's just, it's like I was floating. Well, two, two or three times we did it. And I said, that's just really crazy. I can't even feel it when you lift me. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is with what where where um where uh you are going with your uh, teaching in the um yoga is t taking it one step further to feeling the connection of the inner connection of people that's happening what the, the way that you talk about it you have to be careful not to use too much language sometimes when you guys talk you make you do you do what i do you you try to you try to say the sentence so that all 40 different people can get the message and we only need the sentence one time with one set of information to work on and that that's where sometimes i think it's, it's hard to talk about but but with this yoga you're beginning to feel it not the sensation and 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 the it's like vipassana samatha vipassana coming together in, in a connective way, the Samatha and the Vipassana come together so that the experiential way of feeling and connecting is happening. Maybe that's what it is. I keep trying to figure out simple ways of, 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 of trying to express it because you can get lost in it. You can, it can turn the corner and go over here with this or turn the corner and go over there with that. That's just the way yoga is because like for instance, Delson's trained in what? Seven or nine different kinds of yoga. <laughs> and he's great, you know, he has such a fantastic background in Buddhism and, and, and the way he learned and studied and got to work with experts and become the highest level of this, 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 and this. And look at me, I'm like the ex, I will not deny it, total complete expert in one particular niche thing of how to teach twim and get the absolute most out of it so I'm not ashamed of it but I that's what I decided to master the um Majibha Nikaya and the way that Bhante did which was one book was enough we used to sit and talk about that one book is enough one thing is enough and he and I had a, a discussion once when I was driving with him I don't know, 18,000, 20,000 miles, we had these discussions. <laughs> and having a discussion, uh, how does a person become an expert at something in their life? How can you become an expert at something in your life? Do it. Do it and do it and do it and do it and do it. Do it. And after doing what I do, for 22 years straight, I can feel comfortable saying, maybe maybe I am an expert at this because I can point to you and I spend so much time figuring out if we go here, it doesn't work. If we go here, 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 it doesn't work. But if we go here, it does work. And so my method is not ordering you to go here. My method is to tell you, you know, I've tried all of this stuff trust me when I tell you to try this, please try it because I'm only telling you after it's been tested through 20 or 30 different ways that we decided to tell you to try it that way. <laughs> I don't know how to get that across to people. They think I'm bossing them around and I'm not bossing them around at all. I really don't care what they do, uh, but but um, I'd like to see it work, and all we can, all I can do or hope for, is is to share stuff with you until I can't anymore. <laughs> you know, is to share it and and then have you try it to see whether it works. Because the bottom line in Buddhism, twenty six hundred years later, is only one thing: there's suffering, there is the cause, there is the cessation, 
and there is a way that it, it works to release it or it doesn't. So that's it. It operates or it doesn't operate. There is no big lecture in history and literary examination and college degrees necessary for this thing. It does it operate or doesn't it operate? Does it relieve your suffering? Well, then go help people relieve their suffering. That's what I say. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Yeah. It's very good to see you. you. <laughs> I try to call you, but it's a funny time. And not, I think in another month, I'm moving to Budapest. I don't know whether that makes it better or worse. <laughs> But um, we, uh, I spent an, a couple hours today and we will be moving to Budapest probably in about a month, like three weeks or so, maybe that's what we'll try. So I'm, I'm getting excited about that city because um, of connections and people have come. I, I just wanna say again to everybody here that if you've been sending support for us, why are you doing it? You're doing it so that this teaching can go on until I'm gone. And um, you know, it will go on even after that, hopefully, because we're we have people trying to help us with writing books in three or four countries and recording the music that we've done and just all kinds of stuff that we we have um, put together. And everyone that has jumped up and tried to help, it was a surprise for me because I've been so quiet for so many years. Nobody even knew what I was really about or what I was doing. They didn't know I was just doing what I was told, <laughs> you know, uh, to follow through with what Bunty wanted to have done and the direction that we started 20 years ago. They didn't understand that stuff and we didn't stop to tell anybody. We just kept going forward. And then all of a sudden in asking for help, people have come from all over the world to help us. And now we wanna help other people by making sure they learn as much as we have figured out. That's what we wanna do. So I'm happy that you all came. Anybody else have anything to say? I have questions. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Sure. Uh, I, I have question regarding the meditation, the Brahma Vihara, uh, yeah. like loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity. Yeah. So based on my understanding, uh, four of them are just tools, and the object is uh, human human being. The object is human being, universe. That's the object. So. Uh, I don't understand how to use the equanimity as the tools. Okay, Ec equanimity, first of all, equanimity is the word. It just means balanced mind. Equanimity is like equal. You take the word, you, if I took it apart, we would tear the word apart. Bonte maybe can get on, I don't know if I can, uh, what did I just do with the here? Um, you know, wait a minute. I don't know how to get back, Bonty. How do I get back on the screen? <laughs> uh, to uh, the whiteboard? Yeah. Let me see. No, here we go again. No. <laughs> I get lost again. Uh, so yeah. you're uh, going on the this thing, uh, on the first it's option. Go to the second I option. Huh. I don't know what second option means. Uh, just uh, put tab after you uh, 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 hit uh, share, and then hit tab and see if it goes or. I don't, I don't see where the word tab is on anything. Okay. Um, see, I came okay. to this thing clear. No, I was just. Clear on drawing. So I could come. So I'll stop share. Yeah. Never mind. I, I have to figure it out a different way. It's just a mess. Okay. What I want to explain to you is this. Okay. Narrative. Okay. There's a word and the word is equanimity. Okay. But the, but the root word, the root word for equanimity is equal. So what does equal mean? Equal means balance, not, not, not out of balance. It means a balanced mind is all it means is a balanced mind. So 
when you say Metta Karuna Mudita are tools, actually, I don't know if it's right to say maybe they're tools. Um, they're, they're practices, the name of practice, practicing. We don't separate them. They are degrees of development. So the first degree is to practice, is, is to, we would start with metta is loving kindness and the loving kindness develops into karuna. And the karuna turns into mudita and the mudita turns into equanimity. Now equanimity, if I, if I had my ability to write pictures, I could do it very quickly for you. You sit down and you be still and you don't move. And the next thing I say is close your eyes. And then I tell you, let's just breathe. Now we're meditating and you're sitting still. That is a kind of equanimity. That's a kind of balance. You're sitting still and your mind is still. And equanimity just means that my mind is not moving. My mind is not thinking. It is not calculating. It is not analyzing. It is just being still. Another picture that's very easy to show you is the past thoughts and the future thoughts. That is where your suffering is. When you're thinking something in your mind that's bothering you, and you're trying to concentrate on doing something in life, and it's bothering you, if you look closely, the thought you're, that is bothering you is about something that happened already. It's um, something from the past. It could be from this morning you were angry at, your, at somebody and, you know, that's still stuck in your mind, okay? Or it could be about the future. You could be worried about what's going to happen when you come home today. So you're not living in the cleanest place or the clearest mind that you could live with. And the clearest mind is the present time. And that little bubble, that present time space, like where's my little, I don't have it here. <laughs> we used to have a little, well, you can use this. You can, this is like a little bowl. This press, you can't see my bowl, but no, it doesn't work. <laughs> It's really funny, this thing. Um, you can pretend that um, that the, um, here, this right here, this top is the present time. And everything over here is the past and everything over here is the future. But this little thing, this little cup, if it was a little cup, it's just the present time and it's floating along like this. And you decide, I am going to live in the present time, okay? And when you decide you're going to stay in the present time today, you will get very, very balanced. And the equanimity will get very, very still. And your mind won't be thinking about things in the past or things in the future, just thinking this. So equanimity is a state. Do you understand? Metta is a state. Loving kindness is a state of mind, uh, a mind that is only thinking about loving kindness. And, and then karuna, compassion, is a state of mind. It is, it is when you are thinking about caring, you're thinking more about taking care of other people than taking care of yourself or taking care of your son. You can compassion for yourself too but most of the time compassion is taking care of ways of taking care of comfort for other people so it's a state of mind right so we have to say as a tool the meditation practice is a tool does that make sense so the tool is the practice of the meditation, but what we're doing in it, the types of it, metta, karuna, mudita, upeka, we don't, we don't, we are allowing those to develop those states of mind. And then later, once you experience those states of mind clearly, then you can say, okay, today I am going to keep my mind in compassion all day. 
See, where you all day long, whenever you think about yourself, you let it go and you think about taking care of someone else, helping them get across the street, helping them to lift something, helping someone else. You're not thinking about yourself all the time. See how it works? So this is a softening, it's a, it's a softening of the heart, a softening and an opening of the heart so that the uh, meditation will work as powerful as it can work. Got it? Yeah? Okay, got it, Sister Gemma. So yeah. basically at the first, I was thinking that this Brahma Vihara is like a degree, a level that we have to start with the meta first and then next is karuna mudita and upeka but but you um, don't you don't you don't have to work to do it it's just developing See? yeah and then okay. uh, i just noticed something mm. that uh, actually this uh, i can say tools for meta yeah. karuna, mudita and upeka is just like it depends on our daily life so for example if uh today i have like an issue about hatred so i just want to more focus on the compassion or karuna so maybe it will work instead that's right i just like use meta or upeka it's not gonna help i mean like it helps but it's not big help well what does upeka when you say upeka upeka is just like forgive everything let it go relax smile come back so this is why the reason i changed it into a game I try to, because of the children, um, his age, but also the teenagers in their, even to their 20s, they said this should be a game. So when something is, is uh, you need help, you say, never mind this tightness. You're saying, when you say, never mind game, it's like, never mind the tightness I feel in my head. I'm just going to let go, relax, smile, come back. You're trying to train yourself with whatever is happening to just let go, relax, smile, come back. And when you come back, there's this clear spot. And the clear spot is this little tiny thing that is the, it is this, this uh, present time. See, it's not a present moment. <laughs> it's just present time means that's what I'm doing right now. I want my attention to be helping my son right now to do what he's doing. That's what I wanna do. I don't want to be thinking about the car or going to work or my husband or what I'm going to do now. I just want to stay here now. So to do that, we changed it. I changed it into a little game and I'm writing a little book about it. Um, never mind. This is a never mind game. How many times did somebody come and they were going to bother you, but you said, never mind that. Let's just go back. What are we really doing? Let's go do what we're really doing. Let's not get tied up with past arguments or future problems. Let's just stay here. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. And so you're trying to teach your mind to do this all the time. And if you do that, you start laughing because there's nothing left except laughing because there's no point to the past. It's whatever's in the past is in the past and you can't change it. And the, the future isn't here. So why should I put out extra energy and get exhausted worrying about the future when I don't know what it is? Tell me, you know, why, why should I get all uh, uptight about something I don't know what it is yet? And the past is history. There's an old saying, and, and it's very, it's not just Buddhist, but it is Buddhist <laughs> as well as everything else, you know, it's okay. <laughs> and it's like um, the past is history and tomorrow is a mystery. And the only thing that's left is the present, okay? And the present is in a box with a big ribbon on it, you know? It's a big a box with a ribbon in it. And, and the present is called the present because it's a gift. And it doesn't have anything there until you put it in there, right? So that's how we play with this. We do that, okay? All right, we worked hard today. Boy, this was a good one. <laughs> 
it's taken us a while, but I hope that people will listen to some of this and I hope you will understand that uh, all of this is, is a training and it's just your mind. It's uh, the neural pathways in your mind can be changed and you are not powerless. You are powerful. And if you're a woman, you keep in mind, don't put up with this nonsense in the news right now. Don't do it. Everybody that's a woman, sit down and just chill, okay? <laughs> okay. So let, let's do our closing. Anybody have any other questions they can, but I think we should close, okay? Okay. <laughs> Okay, may suffering ones yes, be suffering ones free, free and the and fear the structure less be. Yeah, may the grieving yeah, shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings yeah, share this share merit this that we have thus acquired for the, the hour golden. May be inhabiting of all kinds of happiness. May, may be uh, inhabiting space and, and earth. earth. Devas and Nagas of mighty power share this land of ours. May they long May we protect, protect the Buddha's, the Buddha's dispensation. dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I do have dreams of that actually coming out with all of us doing it together sometime. <laughs> Yeah, 